Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Points, Lines, Rays, Segments, and Angles. This is part one. You might say, that's a lot of different concepts. Why are we covering them all in one place? Well, we're starting to talk a little more seriously about geometry, and so it makes sense to put all these together because they're very closely related. So before we get started, let's just talk big picture. Geometry is all around us. We really use it all the time. Anytime you build a house or a bridge or you know construct anything, you're using geometry. Even when you launch spaceships or talk about like physics in terms of gravity and all kinds of things, we use geometry constantly to calculate things. So here we're starting the, the, the very first steps on that journey. So we have to talk about these terms. And so we have lots of figures and diagrams and we're gonna learn about what these are. The first one is very simple, a point. What is a point? What does it mean to you? A point is a place in space. That's what it means. A point doesn't have any width. It doesn't, it's not fat or skinny or anything. It's just a place in space. If you could get a tiny microscopic needle and point in one location, that would be the closest thing to a point. It's just a location, right? Everything else in geometry is built upon the concept of a point. So let's start by talking about the point, what a line is, what a ray is, and so on. So let's start talking about it by looking at an actual diagram. So here we have a point B. The point is represented in geometry by a dot, right? We have a point A and we have a point C. Now these are obviously joined together by these arrows. So notice though that the arrow is only on one side and over here there's no arrow. Over here there's an arrow on one side, but there's no arrow here. So if you cover up this half of the diagram and just look at what's going on over here, this thing here from B to C is called a ray. A ray is just like what you think of a ray of light. It shoots out from one place and it goes on and on forever. So this ray going from B to C starts at B and it goes on and on and ever through the point C going this way and the arrow means it goes forever. The ray does not go forever this way, it starts at point B. So this ray is called BC and the way that we write it and we know it's a ray is because we put an arrow on the top. That means it only goes one way from B to C and it starts from B and it goes through C forever. Now we have another ray on this diagram. It starts at B and it travels through the point A and goes on and on forever. So this ray is called BA. Notice the first letter you put is where the starting point is and then the arrow travels over the, the other point it goes through. So BA goes this way, BC goes this way. We would talk about the ray BA. We would talk about the ray BC. We would talk about the point A, the point B, the point C. But the ray has to have at least two points. It has to go somewhere, so you have to have two letters to form a ray. One starting point, and then it goes through uh, the, other, uh, the other point as well. All right, now we have another word that we have used in the past. We call it the vertex. So we have this angle here, and the angle is measured uh, as the kind of the, the, how much spread is between this ray and this ray. An angle can be measured between lines or between rays when they come to a common point like this. This is the angle measure like this. How do we write names of angles? Well, the middle uh, letter here is called the vertex. So the vertex is B, and when we write down the angle, the vertex B must be in the middle. So we call this angle A, B, C. We could also, I don't have it on the page here, but we could also name it angle C, B, A. It doesn't matter which way you write the angle name down but you do have to have the middle point here, the vertex in the middle. That's how we always name angle. So we can call it angle ABC. This little symbol, the little slant thing, is called the angle symbol. So this means angle ABC. You could also call it angle CBA. Ray BA goes this way. Ray BC goes this way. Vertex, the vertex just means the center of the angle where the two rays come together. That's what a vertex is. A vertex is a corner, essentially. A vertex is basically a corner. So we've talked about these concepts. Now let's move on to the next diagram we have. We can talk about some other concepts here. We've talked about the concept of a point. We've talked about a concept of an angle. We talked about the vertex, which is the center of the angle where the two rays come together. Now we're going to talk about angles again. Let's see how many angles do we have here. In this rectangle here, notice we have a 90 degree angle symbol here. This symbol means 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. To form a rectangle, you have to have four 90 degree angles. That's what a rectangle is, right? So we know that we have these angles and they're 90 degrees. How would we name this angle right here? The angle measure, how would we name it? 
Well, the angle is measured from here to here. So the way we name it is the same way we did here, A, B, C. The vertex has to be in the center. X is the vertex. We're going to name it W, X, Y. This is going to tell us this is the angle we're talking about, W, X, Y, this angle measure, because the X vertex is in the center. Now, we could also call it angle Y, X, W. That's fine, too, because it doesn't matter the way that you, you name the angles. You just have to have the vertex, the corner of the angle, in the middle. That's all that matters. Now, vertex we said was X for this angle. Now, we have to talk about the concept of a line segment. A line segment is exactly what it says. A line goes on and on and on forever. If I point a line in this way, then the line is really going in both directions with a double-headed arrow forever, for the end of the universe. A line never, ever, ever stops. A ray goes forever, ever, but remember, a ray starts at a point. But a line doesn't start at one location. A line goes both directions forever, ever, ever, right? But a line segment is when you take a line and you cut it and you say, well, I only have a segment of that line. So for instance, take a look at this right here. This is a line segment because it is a straight line, but of course it's not going forever. It starts at W and it ends at X. This is a line segment. This is a line segment. This is a line segment. Why are these not rays? Because a ray, remember, goes on and on and on. This arrow means it goes on and on and on forever, but a segment does not do that. A segment stops. So this is a line segment. 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 Now, how do we name them? Just like you might think. This line segment is named WX. WX with a bar on the top. Or you can flip it around and call it XW. XW with a bar on the top. This means either name is okay when you're naming a line segment. What about this line segment? We can call it line segment XY, which means we put XY with a bar on top. Or we can call it line segment YX with a bar on top. So when you're naming segments, it doesn't matter the order in which you write the letters because, well, it just doesn't really matter because it's, it's a, like a mirror image. It doesn't matter what side you talk. Neither side is more important than the other. Neither end point is more important. But with a ray, notice the ray, we have to start at the point B and call it ray BC or ray BA because B is the starting point of the ray and the ray goes on and on forever in the other direction. So we have to name it in the right way. Here, for a segment, we just use the letters and put a bar on top. Notice there is no arrow in this bar because it is not a ray. It doesn't go forever, it stops. So a line segment has a bar on top, a ray has an arrow on top, and that is a really important difference. So before we solve our problems, which are all gonna be very simple, I promise you, let's review. A point is just a location in space. You could say this is point W point Y, point Z, point C, point B, point A. Those are all called points. Then we have something called rays, which are just when we start at a point and we go on and on forever in one direction. This is a ray, this is a ray. We call it ray B, A this way, ray B, C this way. We start at the vertex or the starting point and we go, right? We can have, instead of a ray, we can have segments, line segments, right? where we don't have an arrow, but we know that we're going between W and X and it's a line segment, so we put the letters and stick a bar on top. X, Y, same thing, just put the letters, put a bar on top, no arrowheads because we just have a segment, right? Then we can, of course, form angles with our line segment, W, X, Y, Y, X, W, for instance. We can also form angles with rays, A, B, C, or C, B, A. The symbol for an angle is a kind of a slanted, kind of like, little angle symbol like a mouth here, and the same symbol right here. And then of course we have the concept of a line, which I didn't draw on the board, but a line is when it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, both directions, never stopping in either direction. So now that we have all of that, we finally know enough to solve a couple of problems. Here is an angle. We have some points here. This is the vertex of the angle, and we want to answer a couple of questions. The first question is, what are the two rays in this angle? How do we write down the two rays? Well, the rays that we have, we see an arrow here, so we have a ray going up like this, and we have an arrowhead here, which means a ray going off like this. The other side is not an arrowhead, so it does not go on and on this way. It starts at U, and it goes through V, and it starts at U, and it goes through T. So we have two rays here. What are they called? We call them ray U, V, and we put an arrowhead this direction, 
and we put a comma here, and we call ray u t with an arrowhead this direction. This is how we write it, u, v, and u, t. The u comes first because that's the starting point, and then we have the second point, u, v, and then u, t, and the arrowhead points from u to v, points from u to t. So it tells us how the diagram's laid out just by writing the name down. All right, the second question is, what is the vertex of this angle here? The vertex is just a corner, which is the kind of the inside, kind of the middle point where, you, where the two rays join up. So the vertex is just a point U. That's just a point in space. Now, how do we uh, name this angle? You can name it actually two ways, but we're gonna name it for this location. We're gonna call it angle T U V, T U V, right? Now you could name it angle V U T, V U T. So, T-U-V, V-U-T, same exact thing. Notice U is in the center in both cases. So either of these names is fine for the angle, um, but going forward, I'm just gonna write one name down. So I'm not gonna write every single name. You can name these things multiple ways. So let me take these off the board and we're gonna solve some more problems to give you more practice. All right, welcome back to problem two. We have this triangle here and each of the uh, points are what we call vert vertices, the plural of vertex is vertice. We label them J, H, and I, and we want to ask ourselves a few questions. This is the angle that we're talking about here with the, the red uh, arc right here. The first question is, what are the segments, the line segments that make up this angle here on the board? So in other words, we have an angle here. What segments form this angle? Well, they're joined together here, so it's this line segment, and it's also this line segment, so we have to write these segments down. Now, there's multiple ways that you can name this but I'm gonna call this segment JH. We're gonna put a line segment symbol over JH. And we're gonna call this segment, we're gonna to have to call it something here, we're gonna call it HI, HI. Now I just want you to realize that when you name these line segments, you can, you, you can flip the order of the letters, right? Because it doesn't, there's no arrow here. There's no preference to what corner makes more sense. In other words, this is JH, we could call it HJ with a bar on top. This one is HI, but I could call it IH with a bar on top, and it would mean the same thing. All right, next question. What is the vertex of this angle? Well, the vertex is just the point where the, uh, the segments come together, so the vertex is just the point H. Very simple. And then the next question is, the last question here, what is the name of this angle? How do we name this angle? Now, there's a couple of different ways. I'm gonna call it angle JHI, JHI. I. Now, I'm trying to emphasize that there's more than one way to write this. The angle could be called IHJ, but H has to be in the center. All right, so that was problem number two. Let's take a look now at problem number three. Now we have uh, a regular old angle here that is formed from this ray and this ray. We know that they're rays because they have arrowheads. Okay, and so the first question is, what are the rays that form this angle? What are the names of the rays? Well, this ray starts at point Q and it goes through point R. So we have to call this ray Q R and the arrowhead goes like this. What is the other ray? Starts at point Q, goes through point P. Q P, arrowhead like this. And we have to use these names. We cannot flip them around because for a ray, there is a starting point and then it goes on forever. The starting point is Q, so Q comes first, QR, and then QP. For the segments, we can flip the names of the letters because there's no arrowhead anywhere. But for these, there's an arrowhead, so there is a starting point. That's why we have to write this QR and QP. What is the vertex of this angle? The vertex are where the rays come together. Vertex is essentially the corner, and so the vertex is the point Q. How do we name this angle? Well, there's multiple different ways to name it, but we're gonna call it uh, P, Q, R, P, Q, R. Q has to be in the center. Bonus points if you can tell me another name of this angle. Well, instead of P, Q, R, we can call it R, Q, P. As long as Q is in the center, you can name angles multiple ways. All right, P, Q, R. Next problem, we have what appears to be a square. It looks like the lengths of these sides are all the same, but maybe they're not quite. But anyway, we have four right angles, so we know for sure it's a rectangle and it might be a square if we have the lengths of these sides all the same. So the question is for this guy, what are the names of the line segments that make up the angle X down here, right? This angle here that we're looking at. What are the segments that make that up? Well, here is a segment here and here's a segment here. These are the two segments that make this angle. So we're gonna call it segment WX with a line segment bar and we're gonna call it segment 
x, y. Now, because these are line segments, we can flip the order. Instead of w, x, we could call it line segment x, w. Instead of x, y, we could call it line segment y, x. Because there's a bar on top and there's no arrowhead, then we can flip the order of the letters if you want to. All right. What is the vertex of this angle? Of course, it's what uh, these two segments are joined at point x, so the vertex is point x. And how do we name this angle? Here is the angle. It goes from w, x, y, so we're going to call it angle symbol, w, x, y. Now, of course, bonus points if you tell me the other angle. It could be called angle y, x, w. That's fine, too. I'm not going to write every name for every one of these guys, but that is the uh, idea. All right, next problem. We have a nice angle formed here at point F, and we have a ray going through G, and we have a ray starting at F and going through E. So what are the two rays? We've already kind of said the rays all start at F, and this one goes through G. So we have an arrowhead on top. And then we have another ray that starts at F, and it goes through E. Now, for the rays, you cannot flip the order of the letters because they have a starting point at F, and so you have to put the arrow on top, and you have to start at F, and, like we have done here. What is the vertex of this angle? It's where the two rays come together. It's point F. And the angle here, how would I name it? The angle, there's two ways to name the angle. We're going to call it E, F, G. E, F, G. You can also name this angle, angle G, F, E. So an EFG or GFE, same thing. All right. Last problem in this lesson. Here we have a uh, one, two, three, four, five segment figure here, or five sided figure here. What are the segments that make up the angle over here as indicated by the arrow? This is angle M with a vertex of M here. So what segments do we have? We have this segment and we have this segment. How do we name this? Well, we can name it different ways, but this segment goes from L to M. So we're going to call it segment LM. And then we have also a segment from M going to N, so we're going to call it segment MN. Notice there is no arrowhead on top because this is a segment. These are segments, not rays. We call it LM. We could call it segment ML. This is MN. We could call this segment NM. So we can flip the order of the letters if we want when we're naming the segments. What is the vertex of this angle? It's where the segments come together. The vertex is point M. That's just a point. And then how do you name this angle? What is the name of this angle? And there's a couple of ways to do it. We're going to call it LMN. So we're going to call it angle LMN. Angle LMN. But of course you know by now that you can also name it NML. As long as M is in the center, which it is. So we actually covered a lot of material in this lesson. And I hope now you can see why we lumped it all together because we talk about points, but we have to understand what a point is in order to talk about a ray, because a ray starts at a point and it goes through another point, right? And then we have to talk about line segments, and those can be used to form angles and so on, so we have to kind of talk about it all together. What I'd like you to do is go back through this lesson, draw these figures yourself, and try to name the different things that we named in this lesson. Even if you just saw it, that's okay. I want you to get practice. And then when you feel like you understand what's happening, follow me on the part two. We'll give you a little more practice to wrap up the concept, understanding points, lines, rays, angles, and vertices.